If you've got a toddler, chances are you've experienced this before. The kind of sweet but somewhat annoying sound of, no, I just want mommy to do it. Whether it's getting dressed in the morning or being driven to school or just being pushed on a swing, kids can get very, very particular about certain caregivers they want to do certain things. So today I'm going to give you seven ways to navigate this parental preference minefield. Make sure that you're doing number seven. Parental preference is very, very common with toddlers and preschoolers, and it can show up all times of the day, whether it's going potty or just holding hands to walk down the street. But bedtime does seem to be one of the more difficult times to navigate. I hear from families almost on a daily basis, moms saying that their four-year-old will only let her put them to bed, or dads complaining that they're the chosen one, and if mom even tries to like step foot into the bedroom, the kid has a total meltdown. But with work schedules and other siblings and obligations to juggle, dealing with a strong parental preference at bedtime can really put a strain on families. It can leave the chosen parent feeling resentful that they're carrying all the responsibility for bedtime every single night. And it can leave the other parent feeling helpless and kind of left out. I'm a firm believer that parents should be in charge and they should be able to choose who does bedtime each night, not the child. After all, it may not always be possible for the chosen parent to be home in time for bedtime. And you know what? You're going to want a babysitter to put them to bed every now and then. So all the responsibility for bedtime really can't fall to just one parent. So why is this happening? Maybe your child just likes the way one parent does bedtime. Maybe mom sings more songs. Maybe dad uses silly voices when he reads books. But maybe it's not about how parent does bedtime at all, rather just about the child trying to assert some control. At this age, lots of behavior is simply about your child just trying to get some control over their little lives. Why does it seem particularly bad at bedtime? Well, imagine the scenario where dad is trying to put his daughter to bed, but she really, really wants mom to do it. So she starts crying and she's kind of begging, no, I want mom to put me to bed. And then dad just kind of gives in and lets mom put her to bed because it's just easier. I mean, it's understandable. But of course, this giving in just reinforces to the child that the more they cry and beg, the more likely you are to give in. It's a vicious cycle. It's important that you understand that parental preference is not about the child like loving one parent more than another parent. It's just a totally normal phase that most kids, all kids, are going to go through at some point. And don't worry, the mom phase is going to flip flop in a few weeks or months and become a dad phase. No parent is safe. So here are seven ways to break the parental preference problem at bedtime. Number one, decide that you want to make a change and accept that there may be some tears. Commit to making a change at bedtime and really overcoming this challenge. And just keep reminding yourself that the other parent or caregiver is totally competent and that your child is safe and will be fine. Number two, give your child control over the steps in the bedtime routine. Make sure your child really loves their bedtime routine. Have them write out the steps of the routine on a piece of paper. This gives whoever's doing bedtime the actual step by steps of what should happen. So no matter who is putting them to bed, it's always going to be the same comforting, reassuring bedtime routine that your child loves. And then let your child be the boss at bedtime, actually showing the parent what comes next. Number three, tag team. Once the steps of the routine are decided, have the other parent shadow the chosen parent so they know exactly how bedtime is done so they can mimic it. Number four, the chosen parent leaves the house. Sometimes it's just easier if the chosen parent really isn't an option at bedtime. So send them to the grocery store or just have them drive around the block and read a book and you can wave them back in once bedtime is over. Number five, keep a token of the chosen parent. Give the child like a shirt that the chosen parent has worn or a pillowcase that they can snuggle with overnight to still feel close and connected. Number six, the child as the caregiver. Put the child in charge of putting like a favorite doll or lovey to bed with them. Give them a chance to act kind of parental and do like a little bedtime routine and tuck their lovey in nice and cozy. This helps them feel like a big girl or a big boy and makes them feel a little bit more independent. Number seven, this is the most important one. 
make sure that your child is a solo sleeper. Getting through the bedtime routine can be hard enough. Make sure that the parent is able to leave the room before the child falls asleep. When the child needs the parent to stay in the room with them while they fall asleep, this just increases the reliance on the parent, it increases that parental preference, and it's just a whole other hurdle to overcome. If you need some help turning your child into a solo sleeper, join me in my next Toddler Sleep Masterclass. It's totally free, but you do have to reserve your spot, and you can do that here at ToddlerSleepMasterclass.com. See you in class.